Hello, this is Father Randy Sly with another installment of Day by Day, where each day we take a look at a reading from Holy Scripture found in the Daily Mass. And today is Saturday of the 20th week in Ordinary Time. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus spoke to the crowds and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees have taken their seat on the chair of Moses. Therefore, do and observe all things whatsoever they tell you, but do not follow their example. For they preach, but do not practice. They tie up heavy burdens hard to carry and lay them on people's shoulders, but they will not lift a finger to move them. All their works are performed to be seen. They widen their phylacteries and lengthen their tassels. They love places of honor at banquets, seats of honor in synagogues, greetings in marketplaces, and the salutation rabbi. As for you, do not be called rabbi. You have but one teacher, and you are all brothers. Call no one on earth your father. You have but one father in heaven. Do not be called master. You have but one master, the Messiah. The greatest among you must be your servant. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, after Jesus has basically challenged and won over exact, uh, you know, the argument. He won the argument with both the, uh, the, the uh, Sadducees and the Pharisees. And now after dealing with the Pharisees and their opinion of what is the greatest commandment, he really denounces the scribes and the Pharisees. The scribes are the teachers of the law. And of course, the Pharisees are the ones who enforce the law as the leaders. And um, so what we have here is Jesus making sure that people understand, yes, they have taken the chair of Moses, so what they are uh, telling you to do, you should go ahead and do. In other words, they are the authoritative leadership uh, for uh, applying of the law. But he says, don't follow their example. They may... Uh, enforce the truth, but they're not living the truth. They're not living the faith at all. And he basically talks about the fact that one of the things they do is they just tie heavy burdens on people. They, they have enforced the law to its most strict part and uh, have made it very burdensome. One of the things, and I may have shared this uh, as an example, but for example, uh, if you're a tailor, if you're one that makes clothes, if you are found on the Sabbath day with a needle uh, stuck in your garment, that's basically a violation of the law because you're not supposed to work. Now, you're not working, but you've got a symbol of your work. So they've taken it to extremes. But he also shows ways in which they have enlarged their own importance. They have taken themselves far too seriously. And it says they widen their phylacteries and lengthen their tassels. Now, what he's talking about here, the uh, phylactery are leather pouches that were worn on the forehand and on the forehead, and it had a little parchment copy <clears throat> of uh, the Hebrew Shema from Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 7. Uh, Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 7. And that's basically uh, the greatest commandment that we talked about yesterday. He says, they widen their phylacteries. In other words, their pouch is bigger than everybody else's pouch that they're wearing on their forehead or they're wearing on their forehand. He says, and they lengthen their tassels, which is the prayer shawl. So if the tassels are normally this long, they make theirs a lot longer. In other words, they're accentuating their religiosity by symbols, not by attitude and action. And he talks about they love exalting themselves. They like the honor of, of being at the head table at banquets, seats of honor in the synagogue during uh, uh, Sabbath. Uh, 
They love being greeted with honor and respect, as well as being called rabbi or teacher. And um, one of the things that Jesus does now is he goes into a listing of warnings about taking yourself too seriously. And uh, he says, for example, do not be called rabbi. You have but one teacher and you are all brothers. Now, they even called Jesus rabbi, but he was the chief rabbi. He was the one teacher. But um, he's not forbidding uh, all rabbis, but what he's saying, if you are, believe that you're taking the place of Moses and being the only voice, then that is dangerous. It's the same here, call no one on earth your father. You have but one father in heaven. Now, again, he's talking about taking that place of prominence as the singular patriarch of uh, the people of covenant. And he wasn't forbidding people calling their parents father or mother. And one of the things that's done is that this verse is used uh, against Catholics calling their priests father. Well, that's not what this means. It means if you're trying to take the place of being the singular voice of the patriarchs, the, the father uh, of the people of Israel, if you're trying to take Abraham's place, if you're trying to take Moses' place, there's only one father right now, and that is the father in heaven. And the same with master, uh, which is a term for of, uh, you know, leadership and, and seniority. Um, and the principle is this. This is what he's getting to. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled. Whoever humbles himself will be exalted. So the principle is do not seek places of exaltation, but to seek places of humility that God would raise you up. Because he says, whoever exalts himself will be humbled. That God ultimately, at the end of time, that person, even if he has exalted himself through his entire life, will find himself humbled in eternity. And if you find yourself being humble in this life, God will exalt you either in this life or in the next. So this is uh, a time of just reflection on how the Pharisees and the scribes are positioning themselves as the spokespersons for God. They are trying to take the place of uh, God himself, perhaps, but at least Moses and Abraham in the lives of the people. And Jesus is calling them to be servants, not calling them to be masters. So may the words of my mouth and meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, as we look at the, at the, uh, the Pharisees, we can also look at our own lives and just maybe see times where, well, perhaps we were uh, feeling a little slighted because people didn't pay attention uh, to us uh, in terms of, um, uh, you know, what we did in, in something in the church and we didn't get the notoriety. Uh, and, and we can try to exalt ourselves and when we really need to humble ourselves. So that may be one way that we can even take and apply this personally, that if we've been frustrated that we're not given the kudos, the notoriety, the thank yous, whatever. Now, it doesn't mean that the leaders shouldn't be thankful and give you thanks, but rather that we can't just expect that and uh, have that to be what we uh, always should look to receive. And when we get that way, we can become almost like the scribes and the Pharisees, jealous for attention that has been given to another and even to God. So may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.